let's talk about convention. Convention's not the same as what it used to be. I always thought that we were the originators of all that stuff too, so never heard that before. And uh, so that was really shocking. It's yeah. like, really, that happened? Yeah. You know, I heard about it in Gossel Meeting, too, that this, this way was started from the shores of uh, Galilee. I, I do got to say this. Last year, I went to more conventions than I ever did have in my life. I probably hit five or six. A really good network of people that have left the truth that I do have still fellowship with. There's and then you realize that box wasn't big enough for God to fit in. No, not at all. When people say, well, you know, you always hear about people losing out. They mm -hmm. must be miserable. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not miserable. If I'm going to Wednesday night meeting for a dopamine hit to feel good, I'm going for the wrong reason. Um, that's another thing, too. We always, we was always told it wasn't a religion. There is life after meeting. All right guys, time for another interview. Um, today we're going to interview Monty. I've never met him, I don't know anything about his story, uh, but he reached out to me when I posted uh, for people looking to do an interview. So we're going to meet him and visit with him for a bit and see, find out a little bit about his story. So. That's about all the information I can give you ahead of time. But we'll see what's, what God has done in his life and um, check out his story. All right, so he said he's in the medical field and he travels for work. So we're at a campground right now. We're gonna meet up with him. Did I find the right place? You did, you did. Come on hey. in. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, come on in. I'm a traveler in medicine. Okay. And I was doing an apartment and uh, some things happened there. The guy kind of creeped into our, uh, my apartment. And oh. I took my convention camper and brought it down. Nice. <laughs> well, we're full time in a camper right now, too. So. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. So this is it. Uh, I was actually watching uh, your. Uh, <laughs> You're dealing John about that Andy. far, so. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is I'm I'm uh, I do clinical neurophysiology. I'm at the University of uh, Missouri. Okay. I live uh, up in uh, Monticello, Wisconsin. Okay. So we've been there since '95, and I just renewed on another contract. So I was just telling the neighbor, um, I'll be here for another 18 weeks. Oh wow. It's contracting. So. Well, it's spring, so it'll be a little bit better right, now. Right. Right. And what I love about it down here is uh, the birds in the morning. Oh yeah, you know, the, yeah, it's really, really cool. It's uh, but anyway, this is this is. Uh, I was just thinking about that this morning. Um, I've had this camper for twenty since two thousand and three. This is our convention camper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, yeah, so it, it kind of reminds me of that every day. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. As, as I uh, stay here, so. But. All right. Well, thanks for the tea. Um, yeah, I don't even know what I gave you. <laughs> Some <laughs> we'll hibiscus out. or whatever. So something good for you. All right. Um, so I don't know anything about you. Um, you just reached out and said you'd love to do an interview. So yeah. here we are. Yeah. Um, well, I just turned 60. Okay. Believe it or not. And um, I grew up, I, well... I was born in 1963, and uh, December 12th, 31st, excuse me, and uh, I think a week later, I hit my first meeting. Okay. So. Um, yeah, they didn't. It didn't take long to go to meetings. No, 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 no. And I, when I grew up, and as was a baby, that's when they, you know, were praying on their hands and knees. So, that, that kind of shows my age. I think that might be more of a regional thing too. Like some places did that and others not so much. I, I feel like I remember going to at least a meeting or two somewhere in my childhood where yep. they did. So I grew up in, uh, in Iowa, uh, up by Mason City, Clear Lake. Okay. And um, actually I was born in, in uh, Charles City. And uh, that's where we first started going to uh, the meetings. And um, yeah, and then we, 
we moved from Charles City to Mason City, and I believe at the time there was two meetings there, and now there's none. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so it's, um, it, it uh, has really changed. Um, so I grew up uh, in a little town called Rockwell. Okay. Uh, which is about Iowa. Iowa, and that's about 12 miles south of Mason City. And um, we, had, uh, we had a Wednesday night meeting at our house growing up. And uh, as I was cleaning up this place this morning, I'm thinking, man, this is like uh, Wednesday night meeting again. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready. Getting ready for, uh, you know, a meeting. So. so your parents, did they grow up going to meetings too, or did they? Yeah. Uh, well, Dad grew up Methodist, okay. I believe. Um, so with 11 children, and they weren't very religious or anything like that. But um, and Mom, Mom, Mom grew up in a home that um, her great grandpa uh, Olson, um, they, he professed, and um, and uh, his wife had died. They had three girls, I think, and so he raised those kids all by himself, and then had meeting in his home. and And uh, when Grandma Peterson um, then married her husband, um, it. Um, uh, they ended up having made it in their home too, um, and so it goes uh, farther back on your mom's side. Yes, yeah, yeah probably back in the early uh, 30s and 40s. Okay, so way, way, way back then, okay. uh, black stocking days. Yeah, right. So, um, um, so yeah, there was uh, there was that, and then uh, there was a broken home with grand grandma and grandpa Peterson, um, and uh, yeah, it it affected all the kids, and most the only ones that's professing today, of course, the only one that's surviving is my mom, who's eighty four, just okay. turned eighty four, dad's eighty six, will be eighty seven, and they still profess. Yep, they okay. still go to meeting, um, and. Um, yeah, so they're getting up there in age. Dad just fell and broke his hip, and he's on the mend. So, and in fact, they had Wednesday night meeting, and then that night um, he broke his hip. Yeah. So probably we don't know, but it's probably could be their last time that they host, a, you know, maybe a Wednesday yeah. night meeting. Um, then I have a twin brother, an older brother, and a sister that died last year. Okay. And uh, yeah, so right now. Um, my twin brother had, uh, uh, he, he left about 20 some years ago. My older brother, Rod, he, um, left about 10 years ago. Um, so most of it was about doctrine. Okay. So yeah. tell me a little bit about your story when you, when you left and, and why? Um, okay. So, um, you know, I had been questioning things for quite a long time. Um, we had gone out to Manhattan Convention, and um, when we were out there, we heard about Dean Brewer. Okay. Um, and we heard, you know, um, where he died, kind of how he died, and the red flags kind of started coming up, and I started questioning things. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of the beginning for me. Um, and that was, well, 20, that was, was that 2021 or was that 2022? I think later. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it was 2022. Or 23 even. Maybe. Could have, could have been. It seems like that long. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so whenever that time frame that he had died that year. Um, so you heard that at convention? We heard it at convention. From who? Uh, the convention was a buzz about okay. it. Yeah. I mean, there was quite a lot of rumbling talk. Uh, about what kind of to happen and stuff, and I just kind of found found it very strange that um, a worker would be found in a motel, hotel, and and uh, not only was he found there, but he was a regular, ho he was there on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and it was just I just found that really, 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 really strange, and. Um, so we came back from that convention, and um, uh, I ordered Sherry's book, Preserving the Truth. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not a fast reader, and so 
took me about three months to read it. And as I was unpeeling uh, the layers of uh, Sherry's book, um, it became quite clear to me um, on many levels um, some of these things I didn't even think about because they were so indoctrinated mm -hmm. in my brain. Never questioned them. And then um, when I read Sherry's book, um, it just plopped out at me. And, and I started questioning, um, you know, she covers everything in there from CSAs, SA, dress, um, mm -hmm. doctrine, all that stuff. And, um, and in, literally her book opened up to me. And I tell people now, um, read the book. Yeah, you know, find out for yourself. I, you know, I don't necessarily need to tell you. So, was there some big shocks in there, or was it just like you putting pieces together? Um, I think just putting pieces together. Um, you know, uh, the thing for me, I mean, things that we were never told. Um, I remember reading one instance in there about Sherry's telling about um, the workers on the East Coast had convention and they had Irvin William Irvin had gone into town and um, basically was condemning the local clergy and uh, they got quite upset and that night when the workers were going to bed um, they came in with their posse and burnt their little shack down and as they were leaving they were shooting you know making them dance never heard that before and uh, so that was really shocking it's yeah. like really that happened yeah um, stuff like that I mean things that were never really shared with us very secretive you did know. you know about how it started or was that never you had no idea I had no idea how it started until last year Until last year yeah and and literally, it took Dean Brewer's death to really start, you know, unpeeling that onion, sort of. So, speak. what were you told as a child, like? Yeah, so I was told as a child, and 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 you know, I heard about it in Gossel Meeting too that this this way was started from the shores of uh, Galilee, mm -hmm. you know, with the disciples. And uh, when I read Sherry's book. Um, I found out something different, and that was a shock. That that was a shock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was hard for me to process that. So did you just assume that when they, as a child and, and most of your life, did you just assume that from the shores of Galilee there was a continuous strand of workers? Yes. Throughout all of history until now? Yep. Okay. Yep. I just assumed that. Yeah. Yeah. I think well, I think that's how what I assumed too when mm -hmm. I was growing up. Like, yeah. it was just this continuous strand. It wasn't until later that one of the brothers actually told me about William Irvine, that he was like one of the early brother workers, right? Is what he said, and that God raised him up mm -hmm. yeah. um, again, or right. raised up his church again, uh, or the true way again. Um, and that's I didn't really think anything of it until later. And then you're like, well, there's this huge gap of what happened in between, you know? Right. Um, it was interesting, you know, when they started it and, you know, the other shock for me was how that they literally pretty much stole everything from the faith mission. Um, terminology, conventions. Which is what William was part of. Right. Yeah. Right. And I always thought that we were the originators of all that stuff, too. So, again, when I read that, um, it just shocked me. I mean, and I'm thankful that I'm a slow reader because, <laughs> you know... Paced yourself. I, paced, I, yeah. very, I had to, Yeah. you know. Um, and, um, and then when they started that, and then in about 1903 or whatever, they started the, you know, meetings and stuff like that. And then 1907, um, you know, the living witness doctrine The you know, I think it was John Kerr came to uh, Walker and, and Irvin, and they approved of that. And that's basically being exclusive. Mm -hmm. 
you know. And for those who don't know that, essentially, in a nutshell, that means you have to hear from the workers to right. be saved. Yeah. Or and have a chance to be saved. Right, right. So that takes, that took me back to um, when I was 12. Um, and uh, I had professed, uh, you know, there was a lot of pressure, I felt, to stand to my feet. I still remember the hymn, 66, God's Salvation. Um, and uh, standing to that, and then I remember my little sister holding my hand down. You know, I thought it was hard enough, but then she actually jumped on it and said, "No, you know." But I did, pro you know, I did profess. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and that was that was the 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 start of the journey uh, for me. You know, uh, professing and. Um, feeling like I needed to do that to be saved. Did you know what it meant besides just taking part? Like, for me, it was more of just like, this is what you do to, to be able to take part in meetings. It wasn't, really had nothing to do with professing to know Christ. Right. It was right. just like a step to, it was almost like church membership, I guess. Right, right, yeah. So looking back and knowing what I know now and then reading it in the Bible, um, I, you know, for me, I had professed at 12, and then I think year, it was a couple, two or three years. I think I was 16, I got baptized. Okay. Um, knowing what I know now, I wish I would have professed and got baptized, like, right away, you know. Mm -hmm. um, because I think, I mean, you read in the Bible, especially in Paul's teachings, that's what happened. You know, there was no waiting. You know, there mm -hmm. was no waiting. There was no justification like he's I'm worthy it's like I there was a period there where the workers uh put their approval or worthiness for so you almost to had to prove yourself yes yeah yes and um and now knowing what I know now um in some ways I kind of feel like I was cheated you mm -hmm. know um I call it uh spiritual homicide you know um, that's pretty harsh. Um, and I, I think God, you know, he's made that provision for us um, to, to repent, um, you know, and, and then to get baptized and then receive that Holy Spirit. And we can do that now. We, there's no waiting. Mm -hmm. There is no waiting. We can have it. We can have it all. Um, and, and yeah, and, and until probably even a year ago, it was that I realized that. And, um, that kind of made me angry mm -hmm. that, that I had to wait, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I see that with others too. I mean, it's just not me. It's, <laughs> there's some people that don't even, um, they're not worthy enough to even get baptized. Yeah. It seemed like there was definitely a waiting period, um, where you almost had to have their approval, just like if you wanted to go into work, you had to be, you know, approved to do that. But so that was that was that. So it's been a um, 2023 has been a, a last year was I, it was a rough year. I mean, you know, kind of coming out of that, mm -hmm. um, um, and um, you know. Um, I will say this, you know, my wife still goes. Okay. She's still she's still attending, um, and um, and then two of our kids do, and the other two have left. Okay, so you have four kids. Four kids. So, how is that relationship with your wife's your wife still going, um, and you not? Yeah. Are you open? Are Are you able to talk to her about? Yeah, it's it's rough. Yeah. It's, 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 um, I'm going to be honest, it's, it's very rough. Um, you know, when you're not yoked together at that level, it makes it very, very, very rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's another thing I've seen, noticed this, and I've never noticed it before since probably last year, how many families have been split. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's real. <laughs> it's very real. On the way over, we stopped at a church we used to go to, and the men's Bible, we were there on a Wednesday night, so they had men's Bible study, and it was on, it was Luke 12, or part of it anyways, and towards the end there, 
um, Jesus says, do you think I've come for, for peace? Mm -hmm. And then it says that he came um, for division. Mm -hmm. And it talks about all the different divisions that right. that take place. And that's very, for us who have gone through that or are actively going through that, it's very real. And you can understand that verse a little bit more. Right, right. Um, the other thing that um, I myself, I, I've been traveling in medical for, for the last uh, two years. And it's only been since the last six months that I really haven't um, been going to Sunday morning meeting or uh, a Wednesday night meeting. Or I, I do got to say this, last year I went to more conventions than I ever did have in my life. I probably hit five or six. Okay, why is and, that? And I wanted to see the talk. And I wanted to see, you know, what the workers were saying and what the friends were saying. After your ears and your eyes were opened. Yes. Okay. I, I wanted to see, and I wanted to see how that um, all kind of tied in. You know, I wanted to see that for my very eyes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I got to see that. I did get to see that. That's something that um, would be very interesting to do. So what, after, what were your thoughts, like, after listening to them um, with different lenses on? With different lenses, yeah. So from the Dean Brewer thing to reading Sherry's uh, book, and then, and then, of course, you know, I'm on some Facebook groups too, and then hearing and listening to people's experiences, um, you know, it just kind of backed up what I had already collected. Okay. And so I tell people, even even though 2023 was a, a hard year for me, um, I felt like I didn't make any hasty decisions. I turned every rock over to look at things. To and confirm things. And, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like it if you did your research <sighs> after, you know, going to that many conventions afterwards, right. too. So, as oddly as it sounds, I was at peace with it. I was very much at peace with it. Um, and I'll, uh, you know, I always say this, too. Um, there are some good friends. There are some good workers. You know, um, they're not all bad. There, there's some good people out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that the system is not good or right. Mm -hmm. You know, the system um, from well, that yeah. flips everything that we're used to hearing, though, that the way is perfect and the people aren't right. So that kind of flips that on its on it, its top it because, um, yeah, yeah. So once I saw that. Um, what do they say? Once you uh, see something, you can't unsee it. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so, um, so last year, my daughter and I went down to Clearwater, uh, and we did some contracting down there, and um, our youngest daughter. And uh, so I went to ended up going to meeting down there, um, uh, and attended some. Uh, I had to be on call and stuff. Um, kind of used that as an excuse. Um, but I just, I didn't, I, I, I heard a lot of complaining um, about what was going on, like against them. Um, persecution. Persecution, yeah. And it was like, um, it was like people were not getting bread for themselves. And I found myself going there and, and get, you know, studying. Um, and, you know, you can see here, I still... Still read, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, reading the Book of Enoch right now and still reading you got my Bible. your Bible case mm -hmm. here? Yep. Vernon Spinner made that for me from uh, Illinois, Iowa. Um, but so I always tell my kids this. Um, if you don't mind me asking about what age are your kids, are they? 28, 26, 24, and 22. Okay, so all out of the house. All out of the house. Okay. Yeah. And one thing I've really uh, emphasized, even though I've done my research and I've shared some of my research with my kids and my family, um, I really want them to make a decision what they're going to do mm -hmm. for their own. I think that's really, really important. Yeah, the, 
John and Zandi, I don't know if you've gotten to that part yet, but they talk about how, and actually a lot of people that I talk to is that we're all on an individual journey. We are. And we're coming out of a group where you didn't have really that individual life. No. It was for the greater good. Um, you were all, you know, dressed the same, acted the same. And so um, when you come out of that, um, all of our journeys are different and we're not really quite used to that. But yeah, so that's good advice to, you know, allow them, mm -hmm. allow others uh, to come to terms on their own terms. Right. Yeah. One thing I got to be really glad and thankful for is my two brothers, um, one that left 20 years plus ago and then one that left. And uh, neither one has ever uh, swayed my thinking in one way or another. Um, and as I have um, kind of figured things out this last year, um, especially my twin brother, he's always been there to like step me through this is what to maybe expect or, or, okay. or do and, and really help me with that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I've been really uh, fortunate to have him um, there, you know, to talk to. I, I sometimes talk to him one, two, three times a day. Is he the one that left 20 years ago? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I have a question on that. So growing up, I had an uncle that left when I was very young in his family. And my family was able to build, kind of rebuild a relationship with them. And so it was fairly normal, yeah. even though they didn't, you know, they celebrated Christmas and they did yeah. different things and had short hair and whatnot. But we could still have a good relationship with them. And I don't know if it was because time had healed some of that or we just accepted that right. they weren't coming back or whatever. Um, but that's not always the case with everybody. So, like, obviously, you know, my parents will want me to come back. Right. And so that expectation or that hope is always there and that affects that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, how was that with your brother when you, when you, or when he left and did that heal over time or just kind of explain how that was when you were. Yeah. I mean, I never really condemned him. Um, you know, um, I, I, uh, because I knew his backstory. Okay. And um, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna share everything. Sure. I'm not gonna share that because he's asked me not to, uh, just to protect him. But um, we always had a twin relationship. I always believed him. I always trusted him. And even though I didn't see it twenty years ago, all those things that he's told me mm -hmm. and spoke to me about, I believed him and I trusted him. And um, oddly, I don't want to say it's oddly, but those, all those things he had, he had said were true. And those are the things I kind of experienced too. That's really, so I've had people over the years like reach out to me and, or comment to me um, some very negative things. They're like, oh, that's not true, you know, after I left. Right. And they, they'll say, well, maybe, you know, that's not how that is. And we still love you and different things. And because I was in their position at one point, I can give them grace and realize where they're coming from. Right, right. But it's kind of cool to see some of those people who have now left mm -hmm. and are going through those things. Yes. And you know, I don't, I don't judge them for what they said before. No. You're just a, a little frustrated, but you know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's, but at the same time, then when they do leave, it's really cool to see and yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it is, and and I'm uh, I'm so grateful for him, um, and uh, and then my older brother too, who who left ten years ago. Um, he's a little bit more subdued as far as he's his was more of a doctrine thing than the CSA thing or or, or the the SA thing, you know. Um, but uh, they're both very very strong in what they saw, what they experienced and why they left. And um, so, yeah, so we've been very non-judgmental with one another. We've kept it that way. Um, we kind of like protect each other, look at each other's back. Mm -hmm. That's uh, good. And uh, yeah, so. Um, I, think it's, I think it's awesome you have somebody to talk to too. 
Yes. Like that has, can relate. Yes. That always helps. Yeah, it does. And, uh, I, I can't say how grateful I am and thankful that I have that, you know, I went to a couple meetings here, um, Wednesday night meetings. And, uh, when I kept on hearing, um, we like what Sally said and blah, blah, blah. And it just read the repeat, the repeat, rinse, repeat. Re I'm like, I'm, I'm wasting my time. Um, so I, I haven't been to a, a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning meeting. Um, and in all honesty, I work Sunday through Wednesday. So it's kind of sure. hard. Even if I wanted to go to another church in town here, yeah. it's kind of hard for me to go. Um, so I have to really rely on self-study and YouTube and, um, you know, other, other people to, you know, for my fellowship, mm -hmm. you know. And I do have um, a really good network of people that have left the truth that I do have still fellowship with. That's good. Um, yeah. So I'm really thankful for that. So now that you've left, um, what are some of the major doctrinal issues that you saw or looking back, you can see that they believe in and what are some things that you are still kind of working through? Um, well, like I said, uh, for me, um, uh, with the baptism thing, um, like in, you know, even the doctrine of Christ, which is, you know, um, acknowledging and having trust in the atonement of Christ, repenting, having baptism right away, and um, receiving the Holy Ghost. Um, you know, that's something I, I've noticed that we don't do, uh, we did not do in the two by two religion. Um, like I said, I feel kind of cheated out a little bit, um, although I did get baptized, you know, and um, and I feel like I have received the Holy uh, Spirit. Um, yeah, and then the the whole structure. Now I see that the whole structure with especially um, the SA and the CSA stuff. Um, you know, I you know I see right now. We heard it at Malcolm last year. One of the um, sister workers was saying we don't even. Uh, it's hard for us to even find a place to stay anymore. You know, because of what's been occurring, what's been exposed. Because people don't want trust them. them. They don't trust yeah. them. Yeah, they just don't trust them anymore, and rightly so. Um, and so I see that. Uh, I see that happen. I've, it's it's like unfolded right before me. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's one thing, and you know, one of the things I always talk about, especially with my brothers, is um, the change, the changes that 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 are current, that have occurred rapidly, especially in the last year and a half. Um, convention. Now let's talk about convention. Convention's not the same as what it used to be. I wouldn't know, because I, <laughs> I haven't been for um, a long time. But I think it's interesting and courageous of the folks who canceled convention until yes. some things are figured out. Yes. Um, but you, having been in more recently, I'm sure could s shine a little light on that of yeah. like what has changed at conventions. So, yeah, when I grew up, um, we had the family unit. Um, every, you know, you got to convention... You unpacked whether you went in the bunks or you know you got your camper set up. Um, uh, you'd go and uh, to the dining hall right away and and get your get job. A, get your job, you know, for the next four days. Um, everybody had a part, whether it was the you know cooking house, doing vegetables, um, uh, doing the, the you know the plates and you know the pickup, the cleanup, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Now all that stuff, now they got the, the plastic forks, they got the, the styrofoam, and, and all those jobs. Was that from COVID? Um, that, I think that was even... Or before even, that? Even a little okay. bit before COVID. Okay. Yeah. They were starting to transition. And what I see what happened is that was, really, that was the glue of convention. People getting together. I mean, remember... Uh, you know, you were singing, you know, for dinner time or, or whatever, uh, breakfast or whatever, um, you did a, a hymn, whatever, you know, a grace. Mm -hmm. 
And, um, and then all you could hear was those plates flipping over mm -hmm. and the changing of the, of the, uh, the silverware. Um, and you don't get that anymore. Mm -hmm. you know? That's a lot of nostalgic memories, I guess, from a lot of our childhood is the... <laughs> You're right. Yeah. And then the big, in Minnesota anyways, we had the big boilers that yep. you dipped everything in. and Exactly. Uh, yeah. And all those jobs now are gone. And, and I, you know, we, me and my brothers always say this, that really was the glue of convention in some degree because mm -hmm. it, it put, it, it made it one big family because mm -hmm. everyone was helping out. Yeah. And now that's all gone. Interesting. You know, and uh, now they eat and what do they do? They get on their, everyone's on their phones. You know, I've never thought of that because, um, We phones weren't really. I mean, they were. We had flip phones when I left, but they weren't like a big. I'm sure there was other phones, right. but they weren't a thing yet. So that's interesting. So you, yeah, you, you know, and that was last year. Everybody's on their uh, social media. Nobody's. Very few people are talking hmm. with one another. Very interesting. And uh, and again, it's like the glue is just like been unraveled. And I suppose society in general is that way too. Right. And so. Um, that makes sense, I guess. Right. That that's happening there also. So, yeah. And then most people don't sleep in the bunks anymore, and especially because of COVIDs. Um, mm -hmm. They're either in motels or in, in campers. Okay. You know, which, again, takes away the cohesiveness mm -hmm. of what we, what we grew up under convention. Yeah, growing up, we always stayed in the... We didn't have a camper, but we always stayed in the bunks because that was part of the mm -hmm. that was part of it right yeah and i and we would at least as a child i guess i shouldn't speak for my family but people in campers couldn't experience it as well as we could we always right. thought yeah the things um when i was growing up it was uh uh we we were always busy with uh meetings sunday meeting wednesday night meeting convent or um, special meetings, special yeah. meetings, conventions, gospel meetings. So you was always one of the biggest changes for me this last year too is um, now that I have stopped that cycle um, because it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I used to be in Herbalife for about fourteen years. Okay, and they kind of had the same system where meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting, and it kept you those rah-rah sessions kind of kept you going, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's funny, this last year, as, especially the last six months, as I've stopped that cycle, how that's kind of strange, mm -hmm. you know? It's life-changing. And yeah. that's, that's what I struggled with was identity. When I left, I didn't have a solid grip on the gospel. Mm -hmm. So I went from going to meetings and then just... I knew that Jesus was the way. Right. And that's all I needed to know at that point. Right, right. And But I went from going to meetings and growing up on a... Well, I didn't grow up on the convention grounds, but my last few years in high school, we lived there. And very, very involved. I mean, we always went in the early to help set up gospel meetings and all that. But anyway, so all of that, and then it just stops. Right. Yeah, so it's definitely... Um, it's definitely a process to adjust to that. Right. Yeah, it, it was. Um, the other topic, um, and Sherry mentioned it in her book, um, we were always taught growing up that the truth, as we know it, is the same all over the world. Mm -hmm. And um, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Um, different rules. Um Different traditions. Even within states. Yes. But give me some examples. Um, well, when I was out in the Air Force in uh, Washington, Spokane, you know, on the West Coast versus uh, mm -hmm. the East Coast, and, you know, Sherry talks about it in her book, um, divorce. Um, what's accepted out there, basically uh, no divorce, which is what is accepted here, you know. So there's different ideology of uh of divorce mm -hmm. you know and uh, that's confusing 
You know, that's that's a really confusing. Well, and it's not even so much the divorce. It's what do you what punishment you get after that happens? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And in and in some cases, um, you know, I've seen people get divorced and and not able to go to meeting, but not you know they can't say anything. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so yeah, um, the punishment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's what I saw. Um, 2023 was a rough year. I yeah, bet. And um, uh, it's still not done. You know, I'm still kind Your of... Your process. I'm still well, coming I'll give you some it. news. It doesn't actually ever go away. <laughs> Probably not. You'll, you'll deal with things... Um, I, one thing that I noticed, after a while, your brain does some self-preservation to forget a lot of things mm -hmm. and over the years things will come back to you um, but it is it's a process that we'll have to live with and um, for the rest of our lives I'm sure yeah 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 I I don't always you know I, I don't recommend or I don't say you have to go out and find another church but it is important to find fellowship yes and, I agree um, that makes a huge difference in in a Bible study that is actually a Bible study where you right. can ask questions and visit is right. really helpful and and great. So there's things that can help professional counseling if necessary. Um, I did that for a while and that was really good too. But um, there's things that can help us to get through it. But yeah, we'll always deal with some of those. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's kind of what I figured. I mean, I, I basically went for 59 years. Mm -hmm. When you do something for 59 years... It's going to affect you. It's, yeah. it's stamped into your brain. Yeah. It's stamped into your soul. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I knew I couldn't get away from that. So you're right. That's exactly what I've experienced so far is, is um, it, uh, it kind of comes and goes. I feel like sometimes I, I, I get away from it, but then it comes back and uh, catches up to me, you know. Yeah. A couple of things that have helped me too is um, sometimes... I've had, I would have conversations with people who still go and all they really talk about is, oh, remember so-and-so and, yeah. and, oh, this person died. And it's not that we don't care about that, but I, with a couple of people, I finally had to say, well, I don't really want to talk about that mm -hmm. because, you know, that it's just, we're in this healing process that we have to go through. Mm -hmm. And so it's okay to set some boundaries, um, where, and they they respected it for the most part, and um, but yeah, it's because they're living in our past, mm -hmm. and so I understand where they're coming from. Sure, um, but that was one thing that I like. For me, it took me a while, but I just had to say that's a, I, you know don't I don't want to talk about that right now. Um, right, but at the same time, um, you know, when I left, we moved away. And that was healing in itself, mm -hmm. too, because we'd meet people in the grocery store and they would, you know, turn around and walk the other way and stuff. Right. Um, so that was always kind of a challenge. But yeah, and that's that's the thing, too. Like I said, the last couple of years um, out of our four kids, three do what I do and all three travel. One's Jenna's actually at home now. So, staying, OK, staying with mom. It, it went a little bit over my head. What what do you do? I do clinical neurophysiology. I'm a human electrician. Okay. I do neuro, neuro brain, okay. spine, peripheral nerves, testing. Interesting. So three of our kids do that. So um, I've traveled the last two years and probably for the last year, um, and it's kind of got me away from um, th my local meeting. Mm -hmm. And it's not that we don't love those people right. and care for them. Right. Um, but there's a there's a constant reminder of, of that. And it's, yeah. So it's healing sometimes to get yeah. away. That seems to be a common thread. Yeah. And one of the things I've noticed too, um, not really, none, none of those people in my meeting, none of them have really reached out to me. None of them. Just to, to share maybe local, you know, mm -hmm. I heard last, what was I heard last week, a couple of days ago, um, one of the workers, old workers in Wisconsin, um, was accused of some CSA. Shocked me. Never mm -hmm. thought, never thought I'd ever hear that from that person. Mm -hmm. And um, 
but yeah, just the ones that I went to meeting, you would think um, that they would reach out and say, hey, you know, and not that you want to gossip or anything, but to share, you know. That's a very common thing where people don't reach out. They don't. I had, but I think it's, I think it's a result of how we were raised too, though. Like we're kind right. of, we're kind of taught, well, if they've chosen to, to lose out, then, right. you know, just leave them alone or whatever. Right. And actually they, I heard a worker say once that if somebody does leave, the best thing they can do is not do anything, not go to another church or become right. involved in something right. because then, well, we know now that you'll learn theology and you'll learn right the actual bible exactly um versus just sitting around and doing nothing but but i think that's in that's bred into the group where um it's almost quite frowned upon to reach out to people who have left yes yeah, yeah. and that was another shock too um when i grew up i i thought the friends and the workers um knew a lot about the Bible and um, they don't. They, a lot of them don't. I mean, there's a few that do, mm -hmm. but most of them, um, well, probably what was the last year when the, after, right after the Dean Brewer thing, um, I took a, we had special meeting at, at, in our area and we had uh, one of the brother workers and I wanted to go to a walk with him. And uh, so we went out to the local trail, bike trail. Okay. And I, um, and I wanted to talk to him and have a discussion. So this was before you left? This is before I left. And he would not. He would not talk. Mm -hmm. In fact, he kind of shunned it. And um, that hurt me. I mean, I, because I, I was, like, ready to, to share. And, and, uh, and that's kind of when things were kind of open it up and like oh I better what's going on here mm -hmm. you know because you're so conditioned yeah you know yeah it is interesting there is some people I mean there's a lot of workers who know the Bible they know the stories they've read the Bible a lot and so they mm -hmm. can quote verses and stuff but to actually know the Bible is a completely different thing completely different yeah yeah. Have you found some studies that have helped with that or some like um, commentaries or anything like that since you've left? I have on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of my cousins who left probably 10 years ago has turned me on to some YouTube preachers and stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I get to listen. I, again, my, my hours at work are kind of so sure. that I'm kind of restricted. But in all reality, you know, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot. There's a lot of sermons. Yeah. There's a lot of studies. And, yeah, it's and, a tremendous and it, amount. You know, and that, I was talking to someone the other day. When we grew up, we grew up in a box. Very restrict. I mean, mm -hmm. and we thought that box was it. Mm -hmm. Until, like I said, the last year, I kind of walked away from that box. And then you find out, oh, there's, and then you realize that box wasn't big enough for God to fit in. No, not at all. Yeah. I was very, very, I was restricted. I was restrained. And um, I think that, you know, when, when you leave too, you go through, it is a divorce. It's a, it's a divorce from the system. Mm -hmm. And you go through feelings, you know, um, shock and anger you know, surprise, mm -hmm. all these things, right? And, um, and you got to deal with them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so nothing surprises me now. Um, like I said, I've, I've got a couple brothers that, that kind of helped me along, and they kind of prepped me, and like, this is what you might want to expect or whatever, you know. And then when it happens, uh, you know, they kind of, take my feet and put it down and very gently and, mm -hmm. and so I'm kind of lucky. Um, but, um, yeah, all that stuff. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's been very eye opening. Mm -hmm. I did. I actually did an exit letter. Did you? Okay. Yeah. I didn't send it to anybody. I just did it for mainly yourself? for myself. Yeah. And that was very helpful. Very, very, it was very therapeutic. Mm hmm. Obviously, when you've been in doing something for fifty nine years, you have a, you have many experiences. Mm -hmm. um, 
and that's the thing. You have the experiences, but you really don't acknowledge them. You kind of accept them. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, when the Dean Brewer thing came down and then when I read Sherry's book, um, I was no longer accepting them. I, what are some things that after you left, you look back and you're like, you look back with, you know, with these new lenses on, what are some things that you um, are just kind of like in shock of or like maybe connected two things together and like, oh, that's why we did that or something like that? Well, I mean, even even our let's take example, our Sunday morning meeting. Um, what is the relationship between baptism and even the emblems? You know, um, as far as having to be baptized yeah, first, yeah, to, to 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 take the emblems. You know, mm -hmm. um, there really isn't any. Um, yeah, it's um, it w it would be in some churches outside meetings. You have to be baptized, or you should be baptized to take to take emblems. Emblems, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's because they believe in believers' baptism, right? Versus baptism. Um, I mean, I I don't know if they would label it believers' baptism. Probably not because they don't like labels. Mm -hmm. But it's just different. It is different. Meetings. It's yeah. not the same thing. And so, <clears throat> you know, some churches reserve that for true born again believers. Mm -hmm. Um. So I guess there could be some correlation there. I don't, I don't know for sure. Besides, it's just a, a way of keeping tabs on thing people. Yeah. I guess I'm not sure. So thinking about what you just said about um, what things opened up to me, like I think the biggest thing that's that's been eye revealing for me is how much these brother workers have control and power over on who does what, who gets what, who has meeting in their homes, um, all that stuff, you know. And I that was a shock when I, and I knew it was all there, but uh, I, I like turned a blind eye to it. I accepted all mm -hmm. that stuff. Yeah, well, somebody had to make a decision to do it. Yeah. Right, right. But yeah, there is a lot of oppression on the sister workers. Right. Um, I know some of the older sister workers have some pretty good clout, but even over some of the younger brothers, if they've right. been in there long enough. But, um, but yeah, there was always... And I guess the way that they look at it as well, that we're just being um, humble and submissive, I guess. Right. I don't know. Right, the pecking order, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's... That was... Once my blinders were off to that, um, and then now with all the CSA stuff coming out, you know, and shoving it underneath the mm -hmm. rug, so to speak, what I didn't realize the brother workers were really so involved in is, is really scheduling everything. Everything was an event, mm -hmm. scheduling an event. And, and then reading that and then seeing that happening, uh, like I'd mentioned earlier, they go from event to event to event, mm -hmm. and and how busy that kept all of us. Um, we didn't hardly have any time to think, you, you know. Do you think that's intentional? So you didn't have time to go be worldly. I think it was. Yeah, I really do. I I think that was very intentional. It kept us in that box. Mm -hmm. Well, kept and me like, in that box. We always had. And I loved them as a kid. I'm not saying anything wrong with them, but we always had tons of ball games and potlucks yes. and rented a gym at a yes. local school all the time. Yes. And yes. that was a great part of my childhood. I really enjoyed that. However, that's just another way of keeping that like mindset together mm -hmm. for more of the time. Yeah, and, and you know... Growing up in truth and then raising our kids in truth, there was a lot of good things about it, too. You know, there was some structure to it. Mm -hmm. um, good values. Good values, good moral values. Mm -hmm. um, and some of those things still exist today. Um, good people. But at the end of the day, um, as we're seeing all the stuff unravel, 
um, it, it didn't, it didn't keep them. It didn't keep me, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't keep my brothers. Um, it's, it, you know, it all comes down to, um, the right doctrine, Jesus's doctrine, you know, um, and then matching that up to that. And, and once you see that, um, it's hard, it's hard to, to go back to it. Yeah, it, it really is. What is a piece of advice that you would give somebody who still goes to meetings? And I guess yours would be a little bit different because you're so fresh out, really. Yeah. Um, my piece of advice would be dig into your Bible and dig into as much things as you can um, read. And like I tell my kids, you know, there's a God, read and pray, you know, keep doing that more, mm -hmm. you know, um, and he'll show you. He will open everything up to you. And that's kind of what I did. Um, it's really, 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 really scary. That's, I mean, it's, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's scary. It's scary. I mean, it is so scary because you're, you're on peeling this onion and um, you don't know what's underneath that, that layer that you're mm -hmm. peeling. And, and, um, but at the same time, um, I th from my, myself, um, you are released from something that has been keeping you down. And, um, and I'm just so thankful that, um, that when people say, well, you know, you always hear about people losing out, they mm -hmm. must be miserable. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not miserable. I mean, I, I, I'm, at, I'm at peace with myself. Um, and I know that God will show me, um, what he wants to show me, you know, which is his, his son, you know, how has the, so when you read the Bible now versus when you read it going to meetings, how has that changed? So when I read the Bible now, I try to take the terminology out. Um, that you've been pre-programmed with. That, that I've been pre-programmed with, yeah. And I try to read it um, in a more, um, uh, instead of a, like a secular look at it, like we, you know, we used to do it this way. Because when you, you when you go to a gospel meeting, there's certain cliche words that you yeah. that that's spoken, you know, and it's like you get on this railroad track and you ride. That's what you ride. And now I'm learning to go outside of that because there's so much more. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, like last year, even before last year, I started really diving into the uh, Old Testament. You know, and um, again, when you go out, grow up in meetings, you don't do the Old Testament. Not much. You know, you do the Gospels and, uh, you know, really getting out of your comfort zone and, and uh, you know, learning your Bible, you know. And I, and I feel, I always, you know, one of the things that's been revealed to me, even this last year, like a Wednesday night Bible study, is not a Bible study. No. It's just in a continuum of the Sunday morning fellowship, mm -hmm. which is basically you go there, uh, makes you feel good, you get a couple dopamine hits, and you go home and you feel like you've done something. But I even at the end there, I didn't feel like it was even doing that to me, and that's why I, you know, kind of quit going to the Wednesday night Bible study. Um, but um, that, yeah, that's an interesting topic um, as far as feeling good about it. So mm -hmm. looking back at it, you know, and I will say this isn't exclusive to meetings. People go to church mm. to feel good. Yes. And there's a lot of people who yes. do. So I'm not saying this is exclusive to meeting, but from your perspective as a neurologist or whatever you are. <laughs> uh, yeah. Neurophysiology. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so from, from that perspective, what does that, like, what does that do when you you think you're doing the right thing and you're exclusive like that, what, how does that affect your your brain? And I guess that comes more into like psychology stuff. Well, it kind of like, fakes you out. 
Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a phantom pain. It's, it, it, it's like it does, it's, you think it's there, but it's not. Yeah. Once you realize that, it's like, wow, you know? Yeah. If I'm going to Wednesday night meeting for a dopamine hit to feel good, I'm going for the wrong reason. Yeah. Well, and I don't even think, like, they realize that. But it's another, I guess the way to look at it, it's another check check mark. Mm -hmm. So you've got one more meeting under your belt, you have a little bit better chance of getting to heaven. Right, right. And so there's that draw, too, where... Mm -hmm. uh, but I've never really thought about that, like, from that perspective before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you talk about check marks. Um, like last year... Um, it was a big year for everybody mm -hmm. in, in the uh, going to meetings. Um, and even me right now, I don't even really like going, using that terminology. I'd rather say two by two religion. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing too. We always we was always told it wasn't a religion. You know, with everything going down, you know, and then looking at all the CSA stuff. And then looking at the doctrine things, it's like it got to the point was how many checks do I need to do to prove that, you know, that this thing that I've been in um, is not what it really is, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I don't need any more check boxes. Yeah. And that's that's how I feel. I mean, I've, and you'll, you'll see my letter even, I mean, there's some pretty big stuff in there. And... Um, and even since I've done that, there's just it just adds every day, you know. In fact, I don't even add them to my list. I mean, yeah. it just it's just. But I know now that uh, whether it's the CSA stuff or the, the the doctrine stuff, to me, even now, the doctrine stuff is more important than the CSA stuff. Well, the CSA is, is just a symptom. And it's it, that's exactly right. You know, if your foundation is off, and mm -hmm. you live in a a life of perfection or the appearance of perfection mm -hmm. as long as that appearance is upheld nothing else matters right behind it and right. that's why it it breeds itself i don't know if that's the right word but it it lends itself to that kind of behavior yeah because there's no moral obligation as long as the appearance is right 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 and you know again read read cherry's book because um, you know, all this stuff that we're experiencing today has, has been since ex in the, the inception of the whole thing, mm -hmm. the behaviors and the, the secrets, the hiding, uh, the protection, you know, and, and I think, I think the reason why we're seeing, uh, Cherry's book, I think, I don't know how many exodus is that, that occurred, but this exodus right now is the largest exodus um, that has taken place in the two by two religion, um, and it's going to be a long exodus because, and I don't think it's going to quit. And the reason why I don't think it's going to quit is because um, internet. Mm -hmm. You know, every day, you know, uh, it's like a newspaper that doesn't quit. Mm -hmm. Um, more information, more information. It's always in front of people. Mm -hmm. You know, people are getting educated. You know, people are getting inspired to, to, to get Sherry's book. You know, hey, I need to read that. Mm -hmm. You know, what else, what else is under here? Where I think, uh, I can tell you for myself, even three years ago, I wouldn't have read Sherry's mm -hmm. book. Yeah. Um, I've known about Sherry for, uh, known about her for uh, probably 20 years that since. she was so horrible yeah so Tearing horrible and truth. just all oh, just breaking it down and yeah. causing people to uh to lose out you know um so uh yeah read read her book and it's in but then watch just observe what's what's going on and and uh talk to people you know uh i'm I'm, and it's not like these Facebook groups I, I get on and I indulge myself every day because mm -hmm. I think there's only so much sponging you can do, you know, before uh, it's kind of recycles itself. You know, you, oh, it's another story, boom, mm -hmm. boom, boom. Um, but it occurs. It's occurring daily. And uh, it, this is going to be, um, 
one of the things that I've heard this last, I mean, you look at the workers' fields, how they've shrunk. Mm -hmm. You look at the worker staff, how they've you've been almost cut in half, you know. Um, Doyle out there, I've I seen, who's the head worker of Oregon, and he was the guy that investigated Dean Brewer, you know. Um, he's what, overseer now of four states? That's unheard of. You know, and why is that? Because they're, they're getting thin. Yeah. You know. Um, so, yeah, the, the Internet has been a good thing. There's bad things about it. But um, the good thing about it is, I think, in this instant, the education um, and the exposure. It's just, it's just these, um, the system can't hide it any longer. Mm -hmm. They can't. And not not when it's gotten to this level. Um, yeah, there's... The, the issue now is the folks who are just so entrenched. But like I said before, we know exactly what that's like. Yes. Um, but that's why I'm doing these interviews is to show that there's life after meetings and that we didn't leave because... I didn't leave for CSA stuff because um, I knew there was some stuff out there, but I didn't really like it was maybe one off here or there, mm -hmm. you know, that you would that would get leaked out, I guess. Mm -hmm. But that's not why I left um, that. Yeah. The, so the people that are so entrenched in it um, just to reach out to them and to be able to to help them and in whatever way we can, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, like you said earlier, all of our journeys are different. Um, it certainly has been between me and my brothers. And um, I think, I'm like you, I think we can help one another. Um, not necessarily to sway their thinking, mm -hmm. but they're, I think they're watching us too. They're watching us, what we're doing, how we're doing post going to meeting, mm -hmm. you know, how we're handling that. Um, it, like you said, it's scary. It yeah. is very, very scary. Um, there is life after meeting. There's you know? good life. There's good life after meeting. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm reminded of that daily. And um, it's, it's, again, I think networking into um, uh, different arenas, whether they're former um, friends um, or finding a church. Um, I know, uh, I know couples that have joined churches fairly quickly and I don't know if they got lucky, but, um, they found fellowship and they found scripture that, that was sound, mm -hmm. you know, um, in the church. We were talking about this with another couple that, um, you have to be careful to find a good biblical teaching church. Because right. there's a lot of churches out there that, um that aren't biblical based. And so just be cautious on, on, but the good thing about churches is that they have a statement of faith and they have right. their doctrines that they believe in. So you can do your research, you can watch sermons, you yeah. can do all that even before you go. Right. Um, but yeah, it's great when you can find that fellowship for sure. It, um, that's probably one of the most disappointing things about um, the two by twos is that the information within the church is, is not there mm -hmm. about them. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I had, to, I had to go outside of it to get inside of it. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think it's, it's just a way of self-preservation that they've yeah. always done, though. Right. Is um, to, sh to hide that. Right. Now, am I bitter? Um, I don't see myself as bitter. Um, I, I see myself as educated now, making decisions based on sound doctrine. And, um, like I said, I'm, for me, it was the CSA stuff that opened up the doctrine stuff, um, and for that, I'm grateful. And I'm still, I'm actually relearning. Now, that's because that's what happens. That you have to relearn this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, take out the terminology. Take out the, 
the brand, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you experience that, but yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm experiencing. Yeah, the biggest thing, like I've mentioned many times, is that I got a new Bible. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have any of the the old bookmarks, the old study list. That's I a mean, good you idea. You can take that out, obviously, but um, highlights where you... Cause I had my Bible for 25 years, and I knew exactly where that verse was, at least the ones that we, right. the common verses right. or whatever. I knew exactly where it was. I had certain thought process that went with that based on the location of the verse or the story I remember from convention or whatever. So that was one of the first things I did was um, get a different Bible, and, and then it's it just opens it up more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at my Bible case over there, and every time I see it, I, I maybe I should get rid of it. Um, I, th I think a meeting, you know, mm -hmm. that's my meeting case. You yeah, know? yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. and it's not, you know, memories are good, and mm -hmm. so it's not like I didn't get rid of my Bible; I still have it. Um, but you have a new life, and it's a. Um, you can read it anew yes without those those cliches yeah that, and those trails of thoughts right. that go back into your past right yeah so yeah that's kind of where i'm at and and uh uh who would have who would have ever thunk in when dean died that these this can of worms would have mm -hmm. opened up as big as it did yeah um now, I, when I was in the Air Force out there in uh, Spokane, Washington, I actually met him a couple times. So th when all that stuff came down, um, it hit home. Yeah. It yeah. really did hit home. Um, yeah. Um, it's kind of funny. I talked to uh, one of the friends in Spokane, was it last week, and uh, they think I'm still in. <laughs> Of course, they're older, and I don't want to. That's another thing too. When do you, when do you tell people? I mean, that you don't see all the time. Yeah. Do you tell them? Probably not. I mean, I didn't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do, um, I know my my parents just recently found out, you know, and um, but this is what I know. People figure things out. Mm -hmm. it doesn't doesn't take them someone else to tell them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, you act different. Um, you are different. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. Tell you what I'd love to do. I'd like to go up to the Faith Mission Convention in uh, Canada yeah. and see exactly yeah, see what it's how, like. how close it is. Yeah, uh, that would be very interesting. It would probably blow our minds. Yeah. Well, it was really great visiting with you. And um, like I said, I didn't know much about your story. And um, since you're you're pretty well fresh out, I mean, only within the last year. Uh, it's been good to see that perspective. And... Right. So I was having some issues with the camera and uh, at the end there, but um, I invited Monty over for supper at our camper. We spent the night in the same campground. And so we had a good evening of fellowship with him and got to visit with him some more. But um, yeah, it was, it was great to talk to somebody who has just come out of meetings and... Um, like within the last year, you know, and so that was a good, uh, a good time to share with him and to encourage him and, uh, to hear his story. So, um, there's a lot of things that I could relate with. And, um, uh, I thought it was interesting when we talked about the effect that it has on the brain of, um, of trying to do what's, what's right. And like, if you think you're doing, if you think you know what's right and you do it, then it just like has that chemical reaction. Anyways, I thought that was interesting, but, um, so yeah, um, thanks for watching. And if you're interested in, uh, interviewing, let me know. Um, we're working on, uh, hopefully some, some more trips here to do some interviews. So, uh, reach out to me. The email is in the comments. Thanks guys.